talked about in environment. We talked about in some of our lectures, it's about all resources. So human resources, um, food, beverage, all those are different type of resources. Environmental, so part of that would be if you're trying to get a LEED green certificate, it would be um, you're purchasing. Are you purchasing straws or paper, you know, not plastic? Do you have recycling? Are you recycling water? Are you recycling shampoos and, and um, conditioners and things like that? There's a whole strategy that had to be put together for some companies. You'll see some of them now when you go in, Hilton, some of their newer hotels now, they have a huge uh, pumping station for all the soaps and dispensers in the showers and they just refill them. That's so big for a green type of, uh, to go for LEED certification. You're seeing more smaller rooms now, less tables, desks, things like that. So they're more contemporary. That's to save on energy costs. So they're really thinking this through as far as a uh, uh, strategic plan. So all of this has to come through is what's the best strategy? What type of environment do we want to have? What, what type of firm or corporation do we want to be? Um, the other direction is the opposite would be a organization would uh, direct the community and lead the community in what direction they're going to be. So um, a lot of that would be based on how much influence, input, finance, uh, finances and money that they're putting into the local community and the society to direct them in the direction as a community they want to go. Um, so what are your resources? What is the, we said, first of all, you have to identify what type of company or organization or hotel you're going to be. Are you going to be um, a hotel that's a convenient hotel on the highway? Are you going to be an upscale hotel in a city that's doing conventions and conferences? So once you determine who you are, that's going to determine um, your, your economic strategy, your revenue, your um, cost expenses and things like that. So then you start looking at your human resource, human resources that are need. You're gonna strategize a formula. So basically, how are you going to come together with a strategic plan? Who are the key players? Who are the key managers? How far down the chain of command are you going to be involved with the strategic plan? Um, many times when I was on the executive committee, we asked, line managers and line supervisors to be part of the strategic mission and the strategic plan. Some organizations even go to far as, um, you know, the uh, lead cooks, lead servers, uh, in food and beverage, if you're developing a strategic plan, they want the people that are in front of the guests or the customer service to be part of that vision and the mission of the company. So collect all the resources that you have. What are those resources? The human resource element is to, to work and develop that strategic plan. Strategize, how are you going to um, formulate this? Are you gonna have meetings? Are you gonna have conference calls? Are you gonna have Zoom calls? How far up are you gonna go? Who's gonna take notes? Who's gonna compile the information? Um, who's gonna you know, put it, start putting it together and catalog, catalog, categorizing it to catalog it so you have a final uh, a book. Okay. So a bundle of resources, there's a lot of information. A lot of times what happens is too many people get involved and there's too much information and people don't know how to drill down on that type of uh, organization. Some of the class, one class that I teach, uh, I used to teach at another university was change management. And part of that strategy is they called, um, uh, storming, norming, forming, and then uh, you're evaluating. So storming means you're, you're storming in and everyone's just starting to throw everything together and you got all kinds of stuff going on. And then norming means you're normalizing it, you're bringing it all together in the change uh, process. And that's, it goes back and forth from forming. Forming means you're forming the committees, you're forming the groups, you're forming the note takers, you're forming all that and putting it together. So when you're taking your resources, you have to, uh, to strategize and put them together and compile them into some type of formal group or organization. Um, what type of financial resources are going to be thrown at it? So are you going to meet off campus? A lot of your executives like to get away from 
the property, the hotel, the organization, so they're not interrupted. That's why a lot of, you'll see a lot of GMs and a lot of them will take a time of the year to go out on a retreat. So what, in the budget process, what type of financial resources are added to that? And then we talked about human resources, um, locations, access to things like that. So there's three perspectives of strategic management. is stakeholder. Uh, who can identify the stakeholder? Who is a stakeholder? What would you guys say this a stakeholder is in the company? Somebody that has financial um, interest in the company. Stakeholder will be a, a person who owns shares or stocks. Mm -hmm. If it's publicly traded, that's your stakeholder. Anyone that's financially vested into the company, you may not see them. They could be a secret partner. Um, and many times, if you, uh, I ask you guys to look at Disney, their strategic uh, mission statement and vision statement. Um, in part of their strategic mission statement, it has nothing to do with customer service. It has to do with honoring and meeting the needs of the stakeholders and the shareholders. Okay, so when you go to uh, identify them, it's someone who has a financial investment in the company, but also you have to look at stakeholders could be community uh, members, it could be leaders in the community. Um, you're going to put this big, huge hotel in an area, let's say in um, Hawaii, or you're going to remodel or rebuild a home a hotel in Hawaii, you're going to have to talk with the mayor, the people, the community, because if you're a group of people coming in and you don't honor and um, respect the local history and the people and they're not involved, you're not going to be a successful organization on any of the islands. And this happened while I was there. Some I've seen a few companies from the mainland go in and go out very quickly because they didn't respect the needs and um, the people's um, of the islands, their values, meaning they have certain days they want off, they have certain religions, they have a language they speak, they have a way of life about them, and they didn't respect that, and so they weren't successful. So when they were doing their strategic mission, there's a lot of things that they left out. They didn't include stakeholders which were a lot of the local governance and local people so um, down on the bottom right you'll see that governance part of that so you really have to see who and identify who your stakeholders are so you have internal and external stakeholders so you have to identify that um, what is the nature of your relationship you know what is their motivation okay external stakeholders Again, what's the physical location, their motivation? So the process sir, of Sir, sir, excuse yeah, me. Go ahead. When when you say what is the nature of the relationship, what do you mean? Are they you mean if they're um owners, what, what do you mean by that? Well, there's my the nature of the relationship would be it's easy to have a relationship with a stakeholder because they're financially vested. But what I saw when these companies came into Hawaii and they did not go to the local town meetings, they didn't talk with the local people um, and say, here's what we want to do. Here's, you know, the operation we're going to run on your island. They brought in a lot of people from the mainland and they weren't hiring many people from the local island. And if they did hire people from the local island, they didn't respect their way of life, meaning they're scheduling time off for religious holidays. In Hawaii, they have different holidays and state holidays for Hawaiians that have to be honored. And a lot of companies came in and said, well, if it's not a national holiday, we're not gonna honor it. And they didn't honor that. So a lot of people didn't show up for work on those days or they misabused them. Um, they didn't go to town hall meetings and talk about changes and when they went to do construction or remodeling. They didn't hire local contractors and companies and things like that. And that could happen anywhere in any community. So they weren't vested in the community. They snubbed their nose and just kept on doing business the way they wanted to. And it upset a lot of people 
So they were getting a lot of uh, cold shoulders and a lot of pushback that way. And um, they started off on the wrong foot. There's one um, <clears throat> um, hotel company that went in and there are honored burial lands in Hawaii. And if you're digging and doing construction and you happen to dig and find any uh, burial grounds, you have to stop construction right away. And what they do is they build a shrine around that burial area and they put a metal clock and they build that. One of the hotel companies didn't notify people and kept digging and building and, and things like that. Well. They shut the project down and they pulled all their building permits and they stopped the whole construction and ceased and assist. And then as long as I was there for three years, that company never built or finished built or anything. And simply all they had to do is every time they found a burial site or a dig was to stop, let the Islanders honor the buried people, build their shrine, put the clock on it and a beautiful um, lava walls and shrines and things. And then it would have been a couple of weeks and then continue to build and said, by the way, what they did, they shut it down for three years. So it's the vested stakeholders is the community members and the people. You're putting uh, a business on their island, their way of life, and you're not uh, willing to participate in their, um, their way of life. Okay. Um, I thought if you went into an area, I, I thought the, the, the conventional wisdom is that you, 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 you adapt to their the per people's way of life. I didn't realize that you can roll, run shot, um, rub shot over all of that. I don't know. I thought that, common, thought that was a part common of the sense will, Common sense will tell you that, but uh, some companies Again, are arrogant enough to think too big to fail. To yes, that is correct. Okay. And I saw it happen. One of them okay. was a Sheraton hotel. Okay. Arrogance of these people. Uh, so analyze the environment. That's what we're saying. Who are the stakeholders? Right. You know, most people say, oh, stakeholders, electric financial, investors, people that put money in and everything else. Well, stakeholders are internal, external. Don't you think your, your employees have a vested interest in, in the business? Especially when we talked about bonus plans, bonus structure, um, you know, generating revenue, generating business. A lot of the business that I generated in the hotels when I was in Hawaii was from the local community, word of mouth, even with the businesses. Um, I got some major groups and major businesses, sales and revenue for the hotel properties because of the way I operated and the way I did business with all the local people. My name got around the island uh, as being one of them, you know. The term they call white people there is Howley. And if, if you're if you're not really well liked, they'll they'll keep calling you the Howley, Howleys, Howleys. Well, if you do business and you adapt to their way of the lifestyle and you become one of them, you become a Hana, you become family, and they treat you that way. And that's the same with a group or a business. If you don't act that way, you're not going to be success, successful. So formulate your strategies, establish a strategic direction. What direction are we going to go? How are we going to move forward? Uh, a long-term goal or long-term strategy usually is based three to five years, but you want to have short-term strategies. You want to have one year, two year, and you want to work on um, operational budgets that go along with that strategy. So you can't formulate a budget unless you have a business strategy. So how are you going to generate revenue? How are you going to generate sales? What's your rooms going to look like? What's your food and beverage going to look like? Especially if you're taking over a new property, you're bringing in a new management team. You really have to walk around, observe the property, formulate your team. How are you going to move forward? What's the strategic direction? Okay. Um, who's going to be involved? How far up the corporate level, uh, corporate unit are you going to go? How are the strategies going to be implemented and who's going to implement them? So, you know, um, most strategies are developed at the property level, but the corporate will give you an outline or guideline or an overview of the corporate vision. So you're gonna hear from a corporate level person, here's the vision, 
here's the corporate strategic strategic plan. But as a hotel business unit, you're the one that has to drive that strategic plan. So once you do drive how you're going to move forward and develop it, then you start breaking down what's our marketing strategy. And that's where you would have the sales and marketing team. What's our finance strategy? Finance would be from the budget. What's our revenue and expenses? Then you have the operations team, human resource, human resources. What do I need? What are positions? What bodies? How many? Uh, what you would look at is what structures and you don't put names in you put positions so if i'm running a front desk how many people behind the front desk do i need and that's based on the hours of operations same with the food and beverage if i'm running a restaurant when is the restaurant open how many people do i staff banquet and catering you know what's the size of the facility how many events do we want to have uh, per week per day what's our turn time how, do, how quick can we turn a room around all that's going to determine your human resources for your operations. Then you have to research. Your research is your competitors. Other properties, alike properties in your area and in your region. Uh, and you have to be alike. You can't be a different uh, concept type of a hotel. You can't be, uh, you want to, if you're an upscale hotel, you have to compare apples to apples, oranges to oranges, et cetera. So the strategic planning process, it's very, very, uh, uh, a lot of work. It's very hard to you drill down. And so it takes a lot of time. And a lot of times you're running your daily operations, you're running your food and beverage operations, you're doing your day-to-day -day jobs and you have to make extra time for it. So it can be a tedious process, but you want to be part of it is if you're an executive manager, because then people are dictating to you what your strategic plan is going to be, which is going to drive your budget. So you want to be part of that whole process. And basically strategic plan is from the vision and the mission, who are we and how we're going to get there and what are we going to sell and who do we need to sell that? All right. So then you start coming up with breaking it down into departments and segments and coming up with creative solutions and ideas, how to drive revenue how to control costs, uh, how to come up with marketing sales strategies. Okay, so that's how it is. So when you first start out, it's gonna be a, a big, huge document full of a lot of information. And then you have to keep drilling down and throwing out things and bringing alike things together. Um, then you start getting, uh, uh, you know, um, your goals. So you'll say, this is, you know, when you start throwing stuff on the board and it's categorized, you're going to say, this is long term. This is a short term. This is a one year annual uh, strategy. So then you start breaking it down. You may say, well, we want to remodel the restaurant. We want to have a, a larger banquet facility. Well, that's not short term. That's going to go into long term. You may say, uh, we want to change the menu and we want to do it by a quarter or two of a certain year, well, that would be, um, you know, uh, a short term strategy. So you then categorize long term and short term. So you can determine uh, when you put your plan together, what resources to put at that. So for example, if you have a long term strategy of putting in a restaurant, a bank facility, where you're going to say so much of the percentage of the budget is going to go to capital expense. And over a certain period of time, when we reach this certain amount of dollars, then we're going to move forward with building and construction and renovating. A short term, like we said, with menu and menu development, you're going to say, what resources do we need? We need the chef. We need a banquet manager. We need a restaurant manager. Well, we, what time are we going to give them to meet and plan? So we're going to start saying every Tuesday at such and such time, if it's off property, but well, we need money to pay for the conference room. We need money to pay for lunch. So then you're going to start putting together um, you know, new restaurant menu concept, how much money, and then you're gonna throw at it. So you're gonna have a written strategic plan. You're gonna have, eventually it's gonna be broken down into um, goals. It's gonna be broken down into date, times, who's doing it. And then uh, like punch, it's like a punch sheet. When it's complete, you write it off. And it's a moving document that's gonna be uh, constantly updated. Okay, so uh, a, a long-term plan 
is eventually going to be a short-term strategy. And then every year, that's how it works. You keep adding new things and bringing things to a closer uh, a date of action. So it's guiding your strategic direction. Without a strategic direction, you can't formulate a budget. You can't formulate controls. Because with a budget, that's when you implement controls. Okay. And a firm that's more trustworthy uh, involves all internal stakeholders. I used to love everyone from my team to be part of the food and beverage strategy. I would always make sure I had someone from uh, a department that was a lead or a supervisor that was actually going to uh, implement and give creative. Do you have any uh, comments or questions on that? Next week, uh, is uh, Wednesday uh, is... Uh, one of the last lectures next week is week uh, six. So we follow up week six to so week seven and eight. You guys are going to be start presenting your PowerPoint presentations. I've received like four of them to take a look at and review. Most of you are, are on point. Um, so next couple weeks, I'm going to start asking for you guys to tell me who's presenting week seven or week eight. So start thinking about that. Questions, comments, anyone? Okay. Um, if you need to schedule time with me to review your presentation or to go over your PowerPoints, my office hours are Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 8 to 1. I have my Zoom link posted so you can send me an email and I have a Zoom office hour so we can go through any of the material that you need to go through. Um, it, when, if you did not get a chance to take a look at that Hilton video that I showed, take a look at it. Sir, if I send you a, just a rough draft of the planning of the, the business plan, can you look at it for me and then I, so I can, um, I can where I'm going wrong? Yes, I can. I can okay, do thank that, you. yeah. All yeah. Right. That's the only thing I have left to do on the, um, on the closing. Okay. Well, if no one has any responses or comments or questions on anything, I'm going to let you go.